for half hour lunch. Um, so I just want to welcome everybody to the first budget workshop for the board of selectmen. Um, and I did put a little agenda together, um, and I thought we could just talk through the budget requests um, and decide, you know, which ones we um, want to focus in on. And if we want to take a deep dive into a department and have somebody come back for our next workshop, we should probably decide that today. Um, and then talk about other things, kind of think strategies that we did last year in terms of the budget um, and using special appropriations. So, um, so on the next slide, if I can move this. Um, so this kind of is a walkthrough that I do every year on the budget. Um, it helps me think of it, you know, like what's driving the increase. Um, at the top is last year's, this is just the town operating budget. And then you can see um, all the additions or uh, reductions um, um, uh, from last year's and walking through this year's. So when you get down to uh, the line that says $570,000, 866, that's just basically a status quo budget with these changes. So we, you know, kind of fixed costs. And I see this top part is fixed costs. The second piece is the additional budget requests, and um, we talked through these with the uh, joint workshop we had with the Board of Finance, where we met with the different departments and we explained what the requests were. Um, and so, in looking at that list, um, I wanted to hear from the board preferences in terms of where we would like to have staff participate or come back, um, and then we could arrange that uh, for another session. So. Uh, any, anybody have any strong feelings? Um, do you think this is just more we just need to talk through it, or is there a lot of questions still? I mean, obviously, the glaring one is the police request, which is um, the biggest number in that list. Um, and there was a request for three officers. Um, so, do we feel we need to have uh, Jack come back, um, or, or do you think it's just more us talking about it? And, I think we should talk about it first and then decide whether or not it merits to have Jack come back. But we, we may all be in the same place. Who knows? So why don't we go line by line and starting, I don't know, think, is my order mirror what's in the line? Yeah, it does. Okay. So, um, and, you know, some of them we might be like, everybody's comfortable supporting it. Um, Maureen, I, I see you've joined us. Yes, I'm, I'm here. Okay, we just started a minute ago, just so you Thank know, you. and, and um, just to highlight again, the agenda is to kind of review and prioritize the budget requests and then decide who's going to come back and then also talk about a little bit about special appropriations. So, um, so in that red box, if we want to talk through starting with beach and recreation, um, you know, I think this is one that, um, I, I think we feel this, they haven't really had an increase in this. This is the, uh, I forget what the but um, this is dealing with building grounds and maintenance. Isn't this a maintenance account? So, um, Peggy, Peggy, can I ask you just a process question for a sec before we zoom in to, to too many of the detailed ones? Do you mind? Yep, go ahead. Um, I'm just curious. So, so we're starting to jump towards the additional budget request, but I, I know some of us probably in, in passing have all talked about this from time to time. I know Bruce and I certainly have, but you know, is there is there any opportunity to look at the existing operating budgets across departments? And I'm just going to throw a number out there just to to put a stake in the ground. But what what if we asked every single budget? Uh, you know, I, I work in you know sort of this world of program management and we, we do this a lot, but is there an opportunity to say every budget has to be reduced by 5% or every budget needs to redu be reduced by 10%? And I, and I recognize the fact that there's not a lot of fat in there in the sense that it's a lot of fixed costs. It's a lot of payroll. Um, so, so there may not be a lot of wiggle room, but my suspicion is always that there's a little bit of wiggle room in every budget. Um, so I want to just toss that out there as an idea. Um, Keep that. And we're spitballing, but but that idea can go away too. Uh, Scott, may I just add to what you just said? You know, obviously I haven't done this in a long time, but that is how we used to do it. But then again, you always come down to the additional because that's what that's you know that's where we see the increases. But I 
totally agree with you, but that is a big job of what you're asking to do. But I, I'm, you know, I'm totally on board, but. Um, well, would the, I think the pressure would rely more on the department heads to say, can it be done? Or, or do we just say it has to be done? I mean, that's the or, other, or, right? Or, or, have, or have we missed that date? I mean, is that something we should have been said to them? We should have said to them before they prepare their budgets. I mean, I'm asking, I've been a long time. I've got to get back into this. I can't imagine. Um, we well, I, I would say that I think some budgets, that's an easier conversation than others. Some are very tight. There's just basically one or two personnel and a very small, you know, uh, administrative budget. Um, and so the smaller the budget, the more painful, I think, the cut is. Um, fair. No, that's a, very, that's a very fair statement. Yep. Yeah. Um, I think some of the larger, um, you know, I've always asked the staff and in the um, uh, letter that they receive is to look for cost efficiencies. And one of the things that we've been trying to do with some of the reorganization plans is to create more sharing across departments. Um, and so that one would hope that will eventually lead us to uh, some efficiencies. Um, we start sharing resources. So it's kind of a multi-phase process, I think, to get there. Um, uh, you know, uh, I mean, I just look at it once again, and I look at staff costs, and I guess on a day-to-day -day basis, I feel like people um, are pretty to the bone on their budgets. Um, there's, you know, I, it, I don't feel just, like- It's just one way to get there, I guess. That's the, yeah. that's the only reason why I throw it out there is it's, you know, I, I, you know I'll give you the, the real world example, but you know, my, my budget, my investment budget was just cut by 10%, and we were given it no choice. You just have to figure it out. But it hit everybody as opposed to, you know, uh, if, if you start cherry picking, then I think it starts to look unfair, right? But if you do it to everybody, then it's more reasonable. And I know, well, it's, I mean, not I know it's not a popular one either. So I'm, yeah, I'm just, no, no, again, I, just, it's, it's, I think that um, as a concept, it's definitely worth exploring. I think where it runs into a little bit of a problem is uh, where, where we have some of the smaller departments where they have no sort of discretionary spending, their their budget is entirely staff. Right, yeah, exactly. So if your fixed cost so, at 90% 90, 90 of your budget and you, we take away 10, there's an issue, I get it, so. And, and I would also say, having spent most of my career in the corporate world, there's a lot more fat throwing through around, um, especially if you're on the revenue generating side, right? So there's a lot more money no, that's spent fair. on things that are not necessarily necessary to run the business. Um, and I'm not even suggesting this idea will work, but I just figure, you know, yeah. let's 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 look, let's uncover every rock first, I guess. Right. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of bring my hands in a slightly different way. Uh, looking at the normal budget above outside of the box, uh, we've got two big. Well, we we got over two hundred thousand dollars in savings that net us down to that five seventy that are a little bit of windfall. Um, the, the pension and the library, which is also a pension um, thing, I, I'm worried that, you know, if you pull those two out of the equation, the net increases are closer to, what, say $800,000? Um, just on a normal operating basis. And what happens when those pension expenses come back for the library or for the town? Um, they're not, they're, they, they look like savings, but they're really not operational savings. They're, um, you know, they're, they're, they're outside of our control. Yeah, but they're, they're, I guess I would step back and, and just say the only way to change the game is the largest part of the budget, which is personnel, salary costs. So, you know, we have a, uh, uh, you know, a compensation structure that was set up about six or seven years that, um, you know, kind of uh, uh, provides advancement for our employees um, and increases in compensation um, in a formalized kind of way. And so these things just roll forward, you know? And, um, and so that's really a choice that the town made a while ago to provide that. Some of it's unions. So we have contracts, right. so if it's uh, not unions. Um, and so, um, 
you know, I, I feel like, yeah, we can, we can focus on trying to, if I look at big expense areas, then you're getting into operational things that affect the taxpayer directly, right? So, you know, you look at a maintenance budget, that's where we've gotten in trouble. That's why we have a problem with the school plan, right? By kind of trying to strip money out of the maintenance budgets, um, you know, um, you know, not providing enough resources to um, effectively go out and do inspections. And, um, you know, so it really, I think to really make a significant difference is, you know, you're gonna to have to go in that direction. Um, or you're gonna to have to focus on headcount and personnel and compensation structure. Right. So Stacy, tell me I'm thinking about this wrong. Tell me I shouldn't be worried that though that negative 134 and that negative 89 isn't isn't gonna come back in a future budget in some way. Yes, yeah, so when we talked to the library, I think they were pretty confident that um, it should remain at this level of funding. Because I was concerned, are we gonna come back next year and have that annual not go up? And through discussions with Rick as well as Sunny, they were pretty comfortable saying that no, that would not go up. The town um, decreases were a result of positive um, investment results. The actuaries did ask us to consider leaving it at a steady level, but we thought this was their actuarial determined contribution. Let's take advantage of it right now. Um, their rationale to keep it at the current level was we don't know what the investment um, return will be in future years, but since this was a whole actuarial determined contribution, we decided to take advantage of it. Well, and also this does not reflect the additional million dollars that we put into the pension. Correct. Because that's not going to, so that's going to cushion if there's a, a change in the market. The fact that we infused a million dollars, that doesn't show up in this calculation. Um, so, because uh, I forget the time lag for that. It will that's show up in the following yeah, year. It will yeah. show up in the following year. So that was another reason that we felt uh, from a pension standpoint. Plus, remember last year, we took a big hit on the pension to adjust our, um, uh, a mortality table. So we've been making adjustments to the pension. Um, and so to kind of, you know, perhaps uh, adjust some of the assumptions in it to, to kind of adjust to current market conditions. Uh, so that's why we felt comfortable, I think, just going with what their recommendation was. What's the, um, the, the, the top line, public safety, 159? Okay, what was that all union related? Like, what is, yeah, that's, what is the... The police, that's the police contract um, that last year, um, you know, we voted uh, to provide them uh, really a, a, an adjustment to market because we, we were realizing there were big deficiencies in our pay rates. Um, and so when the contract came up, we had a recommendation made by the police department, and it's one we had a lot of discussion about. I don't know if you remember it. Um, but there's these catch-up provisions. So that's another reason you see that larger number. And that number last year was just as big. So we're kind of in this, because I think we have mid-year corrections in the yes. contract for there's this year. An, there's an increase July 1st and then January 1st. Right, so there's and two. compounded. Yeah, and it's compounded. So you're kind of trying, we're trying to catch them up to market-based uh, pay. Do we, when, when will we be at steady state? Is that like a couple years out or? I think like three, three years. years. Three years. Three years. Your agreement. So, yeah, as, a, as a question, what under public safety other is that also part of public safety? No, no, other is is um, everybody, else. everybody else. Okay, the rest that's of town. Unaffiliated and affiliated. So, that's we have uh, other unions and um, and then it's our unaffiliated employees. Okay, so remember that you know our, our structure is you know there's cola but then there's steps so people see career growth automatic increases through a step program and it mirrors kind of like a union type pay structure for unaffiliated workers so when i talked about earlier we've kind of adopted the system that inherently people are getting um, step increases and cola increases every year so um so that's a structural thing that we have in our budget that will always continue to show, you know, more than just a full increase for, for compensation. 
And may, and may I ask, and the health insurance, um, the 171, is that been typical? That been the history lately of going up a little, like that each year? No, we've actually been lucky because we're self-funded. We haven't had that, right? Okay. But, um, uh, but we also got hit this year because we had the early retirement plan. And oh, right. we had some new people going into um, uh, the tech retiree program, um, which he took some hits on, right? Yes. In terms of the plan selections that were offered, um, ended up kind of biting us a little bit. So. Um, so the health insurance account, this is the first year I think we've had any kind of substantive increase, right? It's been a couple of years. Last year it actually went down the year before we yeah. were yeah. flat. So yeah. we were looking at it, you know, we were anticipating there would be an increase in this year. And and may I and may I also ask about private schools? That's that's an addition to what we're doing at country school. This is the o OLM. Correct. Last year, okay. last couple of years we did not have OLM. Budgeted on the expenditure side, we just netted it against okay. revenue. Yeah, because we had a uh, revenue intake for that. So. Okay, thank you. Just to go back to the salaries, if you look at the total town budget, the salaries alone is one third of the total town budget. And even if you took a you know a two percent, you're already at that two hundred thousand dollar number. You know, small amount. That's the biggest part of our budget. Um, so I think, you know, that's, that's a, um, different kind of conversation, I'll say, versus just going through and looking at kind of departmental, uh, requests, uh, which we can, you know, have that conversation. I don't know if we want to get into it too deep today. Um, I think, you know, if you look at the budgets for a lot of these departments, like I said, they're pretty pretty small, um, and then their asks are small, but they all, in total, add up a lot, right? <laughs> so um, so I think that's where, you know, um, maybe if you could just go through some of these and see what people have concerns, or maybe some of these people think are, are, are necessities, and then we can at least take those off the table. Well, are um, the ones that just, that you've already gone through that, maybe unnecessary or not needed at this time? Not that it's not necessary in totality, but. Uh, well, I have my my opinions, I guess. Um, uh, you know, but I'm obviously eager to, uh, I, I can tell you ones that I think are uh, reasonable. Um, if I were to look at this list, you know, I would say um, Beach and Rec, I think needs more, you know, additional resources for that budget. We have a lot of things to take care of. Um, I think the public has a high expectation of the um, uh, quality of our facilities. Um, and, you know, that budget hasn't grown in a long time, right? But that piece of it, obviously the beach and rec budget has grown, but um, this was involving more maintenance. Um, so that's one I would think is a worthy investment because it helps us defer, you know, rather than deferring maintenance, we can take care of it when it's needed so it doesn't grow into a, a problem down the road. In addition, there is a savings in that department. Yeah, and that, and that department also is, you know, there's a savings in the department because with Scott Erskine's just part time this year, and next year he will be completely off the payroll. So, so knowing that beach, beach and rec, knowing the changes that have been made, and eventually with Scott Lee's, would that twenty thousand really be needed? Uh, well, so this is actually going in for additional maintenance, so they can do more projects. And maintenance, okay, got it. it. Yeah, so yes. it's nothing to do. With that. Okay. Um, and just knowing the types of complaints I get, and you know, of things not you know up to, to snuff, you know, for the for or uh, these are we'll take a lot of pride, and the, and the crew takes a lot of pride, and I think just being able to make sure that they can tackle problems quickly, um, replace things quickly, and, and maintain things uh, more more efficiently. Um, the, the building department. Um, it was interesting. I asked for a history of building permits, and it is really gone through the roof. <laughs> I think we typically historically would have like issue like six to seven hundred building permits and last year it was like two thousand this year it's like three thousand building permits 
Um, so, you know, when he was saying needing additional just help to kind of keep up with this stuff, um, clearly the demand is there. And then keep in mind that these are feet, right? So, um, uh, you know, when we're, we're trying to, you know, there's a revenue piece that does at least help offset any costs in that department um, uh, because of the activity. Um, so that was one um, uh, that, uh, you know, I thought was pretty straightforward um, for the extra hours, if, if that was something that was needed to kind of keep up with things. At that point, we are um, increasing our anticipated revenue in the budget next year by $50,000. Yeah, so we're, we're growing the revenue piece that'll easily uh, take, you know, cover the $8,000. Um, on the fire marshal side, um, this is, there's two, this is one where also permitting activity is increasing. We have more buildings that are coming that need inspected. Um, so, you know, the positive thing is our brand list grows, but then that's also a regulatory burden that comes onto the town um, when you expand the brand list. So, those I feel are kind of necessities to make sure. I mean, if we were to not increase the hours, it just, I guess it would result in delays for people. Um, uh, you know, so, um, and then, um, you know, I can tell you my thoughts on the health department. I see the, absolutely the administrative position is, is important. And we talked about a lot about this last year. We funded it for one year through ARPA. Um, there was a reorganization done in that department. Um, and um, we were down one FTE. Um, we're just adding back half an FTE because there's no dedicated admin to the health department. And they are very busy, not only just COVID, but just as, like everybody else, all the uh, activity in, in the town is, um, uh, you know, building activity, construction activity, uh, you know, uh, uh, renovations, you know, pools. Um, <laughs> so, um, now, there's two components to the request, though, so, and the other one I think we could table for a discussion, and that's the sanitarium. Um, I think that is one that we need to think through a little bit more. Um, uh, so I would say the sanitarium position is one we should discuss more. I think the admin is a necessity. Uh, human resources, I mean, I think, um, to be honest, there was, what, two requests, I think, right? Uh, one was for... Uh, travel, which staff development, right? The staff, the staff development was that the training? No. Yep, the training to attend conferences. Yeah, I mean that that's one where you know is that a must? Um, probably not. I don't think most departments have the opportunity to travel, um, but that's one we might want to think about a little bit. Um, and then the fire departments, I think, is just something we have to. Uh, talk about, I mean, they really haven't asked, you know, they're obviously a huge provider. We save a lot of money off of the backs of the volunteers. Um, I think to be able to just provide them with some basic, and a lot of this was tied to utility cost increases and things like that, kind of basic things, operational things, and they haven't asked for increases in a while. Police clearly have to have a discussion. Um, registrars, um, I would say uh, absolutely. I think we had talked about this last time that it was important to pay these for this position appropriately to make sure we can staff it and get qualified people. Um, tax collector, um, you know, that's one we can talk about. Um, once again, this is a, a, a department that really has had no resources added to it in many years. Um, and she's just looking for additional assistance. What happens a lot is the department has ended up absorbing um, lack of support, you know, so I often see them sitting here uh, evenings and weekends, and that's similar with the town clerk. Um, the town clerk, there's also these other election factors that we, um, that burden is getting more um, difficult for the office because of the elections. And I Peggy, think, yep. Peggy, just back to register voters. As I recall, I remember um, in the books, we have that up to about, it's about 10,000 10, something per registrar. Um, and we we had it up, it was proposed up to 17. So how do we come up with just the 10 here? How does that work? Because 17, it's 17 times two. So yeah, it, would be, it would be 14,000 or 15,000. Why, why is it? 
Currently, um, Maureen, they're at twelve seven fifty. We need to stipend up to the salary line. Oh, okay, they're higher than I thought. So that okay. would be twenty five five minus the thirty five, which comes to the ten. And Stacy's there. Is the deputies in there in that number? No, that is just for the two registrars. Okay, so there's there's nothing for additional for for deputies. They have found. I think we did increase the rate a little bit, but they had savings in other line items, so we're going okay. to allocate that. Okay, thank you. Um, and then the final uh, is youth and family, which that I think we have to have a conversation about also. Uh, you know, that's uh, I think adding taking somebody full time, which there was a lot of support for that two years ago. Um, we can talk more about that. So, so those are my thoughts. Well, I actually think that's a, a good list, good good start for us. Um, obviously, police, we're going to have that conversation, and you know, but youth services, I recall it being more than one person. So it was kind of, as I recall, looking at the budget, I could be wrong, just one person. I'd be curious to see the growth in that department and in that line item over like the last three or four years. I mean, what, yeah, what, yeah. what what's what's happening there? I like, I know there's been a study done. I have read it. Yeah. Um, but I, I'd be curious for more information on that. There, there is, um, it's, I think it would be one person to full-time the parent support council, correct? And yeah. then, um, that's right, that's uh, right. Yeah, and then upgrading um, you know, to the clinical people, um, you know, to um, a higher grade. So uh, okay. essentially promoting them, I guess, to a higher grade. You know, Scott's view is that um, the study will highlight that Having these people employed by the town versus the schools is built-in savings um, right there because the school district would have to pay a lot more for this type of qualification. And then um, these people have master's degrees and there was never any recognition, I guess, when the grading was put together um, that they were there should have been some sort of adjustment for the fact that they're you know certified in their fields and have masters. I think that's what Okay, and then um, we're reimbursed for this. The, the taxpayers aren't paying for this therapy, are they? How, um, does, that, how does that work? Scott is, um, is Scott here? Scott is here. Okay, um, we'll, let, we'll let Scott Cochran answer that. Hi, everybody. Just uh, give me one second. I got to shut my door. So the question is, are taxpayers paying for the services, Noreen? Are, are taxpayers paying for therapy for families? Oh, who's, uh, is, that, is that covered by insurance? How does that work? Or are we, are the taxpayers paying for? That, I'm so that's curious. A, so that's a great question. So we are, um, we are all about the accessibility and affordability of the services. So our main goal is when when is is to get the referrals, the kids who need the services to a clinician who can provide those. Um, so parents who uh, if they're in network with us and their insurance, they can use their insurance to uh, to pay for the services. And as you may be familiar um, with using insurances, depending on whatever specialty or, or service that you're you're doing, often there's a copay. Um, with some insurances, there's a, a, a deductible that you have to spend down before uh, more reimbursement um, is, is made for whatever services you have. And that's really a, a really good point in terms of why we are organized the way that we are. Um, in the days before you had a lot of uh, commercial insurances where we were paneled, um, parents would have to pay directly out of pocket for things. And we had a sliding fee scale to accommodate that. But then, you know, if they wanted to use their insurance, they couldn't. So they were still winding up having to pay more than, than they would have if they had the ability to use their insurance. And nowadays with these high deductibles, you have families that have to spend quite a bit out of pocket before they can even use their insurance. So if all you're left with is what's out in the, um, 
like a private practitioner or another mental health clinic that doesn't have the flexibility in their payment scale like we have, um, that can be an obstacle and sometimes uh, a deal breaker in terms of getting your kids into treatment. Because if you don't have $100 or $120 per session to pay for somebody um, and you have to spend down that much for your deductible, that could stop you from, from seeking services. And that's a point we hear from parents and that's a point that I think came out pretty pretty clearly in the study um, when the consultant attempted herself to go find services for children. Well, I didn't quite, I don't question the study. I thought it was excellent. And you and I have spoken about the yeah. rising need, rising need. But when children get therapy in the schools, mm -hmm. that is covered, correct, by the yeah, board of yeah, that's free. Yeah, there's that's there's free. no cost. Yeah, so, but but that's you not. have an in school, you have an in school presence. Is that right. free? Yeah, yeah. To, so, yeah, to pay. I mean, we don't charge. We don't. Uh, if the question is like, do we charge kids or families for accessing our services in school? We do not. No. Because you know, Scott, it's a big. It's just growing number. And you know, I mean, and I think I look at all the therapists in the shoreline area, private, private mm -hmm. entities, and I'm just wondering as this now. I was surprised how big this number has grown and I know between COVID and even pre-COVID with anxiety and all, we've got a problem on our hands. But I just, the, the way this is going, going out, it, it was a little bit of a surprise to me. Well, so, and you're looking at the costs of the services uh, when you say it's growing and growing? Like well, the well, budget? this is the, the budget. I'm taking a look at what it's going to be, keep going and uh, what the taxpayers will be paying as our yeah. budget goes up, up, in the, up in that area. Are you, uh, I'm, I'm struggling with following you, Noreen. Are you focused on the additional request that's on the budget here or well, just yeah, services I, in general? In general. I mean, it's only 26,000 and Peggy explained to me what she thought that was. And, but um, as I looked at your budget and I don't know if it's been that way for the last few years, is this something that's been climbing every year? And is this becoming a major cost for taxpayers? I'm not saying it's not needed, Scott, please understand. But no, I think I I'd like an answer for it. Yeah, no, I, I think our costs have have steadily, our, our budget has steadily increased over the years. Some of that cost is driven by the salary grading system within the town. Uh, right. So that's not really in, as much in, in our control. Um, and I, I would point out the model that we, we by, by looking at what we can do around third party reimbursables is a good example of where we are also um, trying to, to mitigate those costs back to the town. And I mean, in very large increments, year after year after year, we can show our clinical revenue going up. Now I'd have to look at to see how, you know, the percentage of that increase relates to the percentages of any increases we have to our department. But I think we've done a pretty good job of keeping up um, with some of those costs. Okay, I, well, you know what? I'd, I'd love to see more of that. And it's way beyond yeah. the 26,000. I'm sorry, I know we're looking at additional, but as I looked at the budget request, Obviously, the police stood out, but so did you services. And yeah, um, I and I know, that. and I've spoke, spoken to the school, um, Liz Battaglia, pre-COVID, and I know these numbers are going up, but I think I was surprised at how much of you services is now becoming therapy if, for someone who's been away for a little while. That's all. I'm, so I'd love more information on it, and I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you so much. You're welcome. You're welcome. Well, We're still a lot I, of the other stuff, too. Yeah, well, I will say, um, Doreen, we had extensive conversations about this um, pre-COVID, actually, about the budget, and um, and I had to go through kind of an educational uh, curve myself, understanding the services that were being offered. So I know Scott has a lot of good information about that, explaining your resources in Toronto, um, and also how the uh, uh, reimbursement process works with the insurance companies and um, you know the things to offset. So I think it's worth the two of you maybe doing that, you know, Scott, and just explaining some of where the personnel growth is. There was also some things, Noreen, um, there were grants that we had funded positions from grants that also converted <laughs> into permanent positions. So that also did right. change the budget. So um, uh, so those are the well, things that I could give you the background on. Well, grants for people, let's face it, this is, we've done this all. We get a grant, bring someone in for a program, and when the grant runs out, we make that person a part of the the department. I mean, we've, we've done it forever. It's not something new. It's not nothing new in any department. Anyway, I just saw that number going up and it really, I mean, it was significant. 
um, part when you do it. And I'd love to see really what the offset is and stuff like that. I just don't do it, but it's, it's a growing let's number. Let's that talk. I, let's, I appreciate it. That'd be great. Yeah, no, and I, I, I wish, you know, because I can show budget offsets for, for almost all the costs that we're asking for on these additional I can almost show you a zero a zero percent offset on on what we're asking to do this year and that and it comes out of the model that we're doing so it's not grant based it's something that we can sustain um so I and I'd be very eager to sit with you and go through some of that and answer more that'd be great that'd be great I, yeah I guess I don't understand the insurance part of the recovery thank you so yeah. much but it, it's you know yeah, what it's you're a, welcome it's not a big number here but it's a big number in the budget it's great it's a growing number in the budget and from what I understand, it's been doing that every year for a while. So um, I would just like more information. I think it would help me understand it. Thank you so much, though, on that one, Scott. Right. You're, you're very uh, welcome. I, Thank you. A, a nuance um, that um, that that I'll put on this, Lorraine, that that Scott didn't, but has in the past, is that while we've got a lot of um, professional therapists in town, we don't have a lot of therapists that are servicing the child. Uh, you know, the, the, the kids. Um, and so it, it, it feels like a little bit of a disconnect that we've got this very robust therapy community in town, but by and large, the, the, the ones that are treating this demographic are very, very limited. And that's, Scott's and explained what, that in the what, past. And what then, is this a high school or middle school demographic? What is the demographic here? I think the under 18 crowd. A day eighteen down to twelve. Well, do we oh. have we have we have five year olds in the program? Yes. Oh. Yes. That, we that, do. That, that, the we the, the number uh, the the number of, of kids under ten has increased uh, hugely in in the last five to ten years, um, and the cases are becoming more complicated. Like so, to Bruce's point, you you do have a number of uh, a very robust. Um, uh, a system of, of uh, private practice clinicians, uh, therapists, uh, all over up and down the shoreline. And during the pandemic, they're all overwhelmed. You, you should know that. But even before that, you, you did have this robust network. The problem is uh, not all of them accept or are trained to work with younger children. And it's not very um, lucrative to work with, with, with kids with complex mental health issues because they require case management. They require, you know, uh, extra appointments with parents, reaching out to the schools, coordinating of, of other referrals and systems work that that you can't bill for. So, you know, that, that you know, we do the work the right way where systems think are, we're, we're embedded in the community. So like, that's the work that we do. And that's the work that that's really important to do. Um, and it does not exist. Like there are not much of any therapists that will um, that will take those kind of cases. And where they are, they're usually pushing themselves beyond some of their own capacity to do the extra work. And Scott, um, especially with this younger age group, I would assume the schools are doing a large percentage of it, I would think. No? Of the therapeutic work? Well, I mean, they're doing what they're supposed to do for the school system. But, um, but, if it, but I mean, de dealing with special education and putting anxiety <laughs> underneath that, and I know they're... Um, the school's dealing with that also too. They have therapists yeah. on, or they don't, because I and I know the middle school and high school do, but from what I understand, they were trying to do more. Well, anyway, we're getting off topic, but yeah, I, I apologize. It was just, <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Scott, Scott, hey, hey Noreen, one one suggestion. Just um, we just had Madison Youth and Family Services meeting this week, and Angela Hearn, the assistant director of the clinic, actually spent a whole host of time talking about the services and what's going on. You might just want to take a quick peek at that that meeting, that video. I think okay. it would be an awesome explanation of just sort of the breadth of the services they're doing and the depth of services. And just sort of talked about the parent, um, the you know, the parent coordinator that they're talking about in our additional budget request. So I, I think it would give you some good background. I, I will do that because you know, and also the continuity of where the Madison Youth Services ends, town services end, and where school services begin or the overlap. That it's it's there's a, it's it's grown so fast. It would be great to be able to understand it, but I will take you up and I'll take a look at that Zoom meeting. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Come talk to me. Let's have coffee. <laughs> um, okay, so um, getting back to then, um, you know, is there anything here that people are comfortable taking off? Or, well, when I say taking off, I'm saying, oh, are there any that we're all in agreement on at least? So we can put those aside. 
look at the list. I mean, we're going to vote on a package, obviously, at the end, but it's nice to kind of clear out, you know, ones that, so for region recreation, is there any uh, view that that's excessive? Should we maybe give them half of the request? Um, well, 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 Peggy, may I ask, looking at this list, other than the police, we're not talking about a lot of money, but health department, will any of those issues go away after COVID or when COVID gets at least settled into some normalcy? I mean, um, is that, that's so something I think, that- Yeah, I mean, I think that, um, so Trent's view is that, um, you know, that the sanitarium is justified and part of it is he's talked about the backlog. So originally we put this in as a, so the, the, the admin is essential in my view, and that's just part of staff that's needed. And, we had before, but then we had a retirement. So we're placing a, a, a one a one FTP, half an FTP. Um, and, but the other piece, um, I had suggested to him last year, that should be an ARPA request, because it, it, it seemed to me, it was a lot with as this catch-up activity and backlog, uh, we're getting a little boom going on, and, um, and they were kind of behind, because his office has been, he in particular, man has been handling pretty much all the field work, He's been very much focused on COVID. That's going to wind down, hopefully. I mean, last year he was working very closely with the school district as well, and in love with them, as well as just all the town things, rolling out the vaccination clinics. You know, there was a lot going on. Oh, of course, yeah. Um, so I think that you know his capacity should be better this year to start kind of going back to the normal things that he was doing. Um, and so maybe one option is to explore instead of you know hiring a full time sanitarium is perhaps you know um, some sort of uh, you know hiring you know we're partnering with another community and you know just contracting with somebody when we feel that we're way behind and figuring out what that number is you know so if he feels like you know he's got you know uh, needs somebody for an extra. 10 hours a week or whatever to get over the hump, you know, maybe we could work out something that way versus actually taking on a full-time staff member. I mean, I think he's also spent a lot of time looking at other health departments. Um, and, you know, many of them are staffed. Uh, they have more robust staff in the health department. Um, you know, but I think we also have to look at our commercial base. It's not as extensive as some of our neighboring communities. Um, and so, uh, which does, is more time intensive and requires a lot more. Uh, you know, personnel to maintain and do inspections and things like that. Um, so I think the health department one is one perhaps we can maybe be a little creative about and think about um, in terms of the sanitary request. So I don't know if that other people feel differently. That's $61,000 request. I would agree that we hold off on that one. I, I think we fund the admin, but but hold off on the 61 for now. Yeah, Peggy, I'd like to suggest um, that we identify which items we are not prepared to approve that we need more information on and otherwise um, those that we don't need more information on let's just assume that we're all in agreement that uh, those are approved I, I hate well we may also we may also be we may also be okay with certain items al without needing further yeah or, or cut sorry cutting cutting items without needing further information yeah, and, right. and I think Peggy's identified, uh, at least in her mind, those that she thinks we should spend more time on, and, and um, uh, sound like a pretty good list to me. Just to review what I think Peggy said is the sanitarium position, um, the uh, staff development increase under human resources, the uh, police department request for three patrol officers, um, the uh, uh, youth and family services, and I think that was it. And I, I certainly would like to learn more about those items. I think the rest of those items that I didn't just identify, I'm pretty comfortable with uh, uh, not spending any more time on them. I don't need any more information on them. I think that was a great synopsis, Al. <laughs> I vote with Al. I'm not against that. Um, I'm, I'm thinking about it in a slightly different way. I am um, I, I'm having trouble getting behind a $1.2 million increase. 
Um, and I'm trying to think what is the amount of increase that, that, that I could get behind. Um, and if these are substantially, this list is substantially things that we really, really need, then back to Scott's earlier point, I think the existing budget has to be subject to review and modification. Is this, this, these items as they stand in total just is too much money. So here's, maybe, here's maybe another way to look at it. And I'll just throw out another kind of lens, but is, is, there a, is there a number that we're trying to get to? Meaning, you know, right now I'm looking at the bottom of this, this sheet that you got up here, Peggy, and it says 5.17 or 4.64. Is there a is there a target that we should have in mind that we could be angling towards, you know, sort of top down versus bottom up? Um, so I think last year's budget was uh, a reasonable request from the town. But I mean, I, I think you kind of have to go both ways, right? You have to look at it top down and bottom up and try to find a, a balance. Uh, and part of the Budget increase, though, is really ultimately what the mill rate increases because that's what hits, hits the taxpayer, right? Um, and so that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk a little bit more, too, about other things that are impacting the mill rate and how we can impact the budget and using those tools as well to make recommendations. Um, so, I mean, the town has always been, I think, Stacey, what was last year's operating budget? This was three, I don't know, I didn't bring the course that. May I ask you a question? When you show the increase, and I do think people want to know about increase. I, I agree with you, Peggy. Mill rate, mill, mill rate is what it really is, but they want the increase. And coming off hopefully some successful referendums, I think we've got to be super sensitive to get, get a budget passed. Um, but but uh, but like the unlike the Board of Ed side, when we show the five point one seven. Are we including any retired debt? Because I know the Board of Ed does that. We, I think we've really got to push changing that. But um, we, the town doesn't do that side, that on this side, do they? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. We do, so, so that's 5.17. It includes the debt, it includes capital and debt. So yeah, so if you go down below. Big expenditure budget. Yeah, so, if so, it's, so, up, it's, so it's not the increase to the operating budget. It's correct. an increase, it increase okay. Shows debt and capital right, separately. Last year, Peggy, it was 3.74. This for the town, right? 3.1.2, 3 for the board of ed, which came to an overall increase of 2.4. I mean, I think the town, I think the, the philosophy has always been to try to target, you know, an overall 2% budget, right? Yeah. yeah. That's kind of been. I was on the board of finance 10 years ago, kind of the number that people always talked about that you wanted to kind of be that at your top end at around 2%. Um, and so, um, so in the town budget, you know, is always the one that's been a little bit more starved with resources and smaller. So the dollars have a different impact. Last but, year, but, but, but Peggy, when yeah. I look at the debt, the, now our debt this year, oh. town service is up 1.5, correct? Is that, am I seeing that right? Does that mean the 5.7 includes an increase of 1.5 of debt? No, it, increased, it includes an increase of 108,000, Marty. It was 1.4 last year, and then it's going up to 1.5. So there is an increase built in here of 1.4. There's an increase of 1.5 in, in this no, one? I'm sorry, of 108,000. It went from 1.4 to 1.5. Okay, so it's the change. Okay, the difference. Okay, all right. You know, one one. No, it's just the total. Yeah, it's just yeah. the total. Yeah, so it seems to the final budget. It seems so conservative to me when we include we include additional debt. Our, as our debt grows, we include it with that percentage. I think. It's a, it's a good message, but I think we've got to be clear on it. But when it starts to go down, I think we run into problems because I think we start, and not when I say we, I don't mean the town, we start to spend money that really is capital money on operating cost. And I've seen it happen on the Board of Ed side 
I don't know if the last couple of years, but I know prior to that. And I just think this is something we got to be really careful of. It's just such a way to grow an operating budget by incorporating savings as your, you know, the cost of the high school, the payments to high school are going down now. So do we, we are spending 400,000 less on the payment. All of a sudden we absorb that 400,000 into curriculum. And that's what's been happening, I believe, on our board of ed side. And I think it's one of the things besides decline enrollment that has really raised our numbers so high. Even capital, I mean, in other municipalities, they have an operational budget and a capital budget that is voted for a referendum. But in Madison, it's a total town and a total board of that, which unfortunately does include capital and debt schools. Well, 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 Stacey, as you know, the State Department of my, uh, Education, um, the Kathy Dempsey, pulled out for our formula because so we could do uh, per pupil expenditure per town, apples to apples. They pulled out some of the stuff. There were about 23 towns. We were one of them that were including, and we created this, we created this problem. Um, I actually, on the board of, board of selectmen side, I think we did, um, but they, they were including capital, either it was plus or minus, and we weren't comparing apples to apples. They now have changed the formula. And if you look at the latest reports, the per pupil expenditure from, from Madison is significantly higher than, for say, Guilford. And it's and, and so I think we kind of I believe that's gotten straightened out pretty much at the state level, so we can really look at that report and see some value in it. But anyway, it's going forward. I didn't realize the town. I see the bottom line is, but yeah. but but I don't think the town has ever taken the savings part of it when you're on the other side of this this paying off this debt and incorporated any of that into an operating budget and that savings. And that's where I think we've 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 been not real careful. I know, you know, I'll tell you what I really think. And I think I might've been a select at the time. I think we were trying to show with the new high school um, that, you know, you look, you're going to get this high school. It's going to be costly. You've got to learn to incorporate it into your budget. So the intention was good. It just, I don't believe, you know, when people get up and say, we have a 1.3% increase, they think we mean operating budget. And I, I just think we've just got to be, clear going forward, that's all. But I have had problems with incorporating any kind of savings out of capital or debt into operating. And I think, I don't think the town has ever done that, but I think the Board of Ed started doing that a few years. I don't know when. Well, that, that might be a, a conversation with the charter review because that's something in terms of how we work on our budgets. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. And then yeah. we can also, when we talk to the Board of Ed, too, the Board yeah. of Ed, it's just, a, it's definitely different. You no, know, year, years ago, Peggy, I remember when I was a newer selectman, I remember one of the older selectmen saying to me, as we pay down debt, we, you, there's an opportunity here to take on some capital projects here without raising the taxes. And by what doing it the way we're doing it now, we've lost that. You know, I'm not talking about an $89 million project, but I'm talking about a smaller project. So you pay down something and all of a sudden you're, you, you, can, you can afford to pick up X amount of dollars in your budget for a new project without having people incur an increase. And, and we did it forever. And at some point we, we made the decision to change that. So it's just is something I'd love to discuss in the future. And always during the workshops, I don't know if you recall, above the line and below the line. So we've always had that above the line before the capital and the debt service. That yeah. term was around and that was the operating and then below the line was the capital and debt service and then that total at the end. Right, right. And we know that, but I think most people yeah. think when you give that bottom line, yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's operating. Here. That's why we kind of switched out here. But um, understand what great thing about the operating budget is that it's going to be um So I think then, having said all that, uh, we, we could maybe get back to a little bit um, the, you know, if I can just get, if we go down the line, it's fine what ones people are okay with, at least, so we don't have to talk about it again. Uh, beach and Rec, how does the board feel about Beach and Rec? I'm okay with it. Did, did, do you know what exactly okay, was for the 20,000? What was it for? Yeah, so there was 10,000 for plant and cycle maintenance, <laughs> 5,000 for Salt Meadow concert series, and 5,000 on the trail markers, flowers for playground, and playground wood treatment. 
All the details are in your tab under the number. It's on page 266, Noreen. Yep, 266. Now, is any of this one time cost that we could no. just pay for now? This ball yearly, yearly thing. Okay. Yeah, I believe Austin is requesting to increase the baseline going forward. Yeah, he wants to just, he just feels that the plant cycle maintenance uh, account is not that. That's my problem is that, um, you know, the thumbs up or thumbs down on any of these line items, I think I'd be happy to support all of these. They're, they're well thought out. They appear to be needed. Um, and at the end, I can't vote for it. Um, it's, it's, you know, in the aggregate, this is. Well, we don't, we haven't voted for anything yet. We're just seeing where issues lie. <laughs> that I have to go into. It doesn't mean we're voting now in the budget. We're just getting an idea. That if it if the numbers play out, you're okay with the twenty thousand uh, dollars. Yeah, I think. I mean, right, but we don't want it, Bruce. Just to counter what you just said, though, we don't want to get to a position where we've said everything makes sense. We get to a number, a bottom line number, it doesn't work. I think we've got to do the work now to say thumbs up, thumbs down of stuff that we just know we got to take out because we're not going to like the number. It we already don't like the number right now. So wait, maybe we do more. You know, thumbs downs right now. And then, yeah, I think we got to figure out which ones marks, to take out. Yeah, the question marks for the others, uh, depending on where we are. So, building department, extra hour for building. Yeah. You know, you know, in all seriousness, besides, besides the police and health department, we're talking not talking a lot of money here. And I mean, if it's going to make a difference in these programs and these departments, with this, with twelve thousand dollars, going to make a difference in the fire marshal's office, and we're going to debate cutting it. But it all adds up to a bigger number, Noreen. I know, I know. Percentage. I mean, it's. it's I, don't, I, don't, I don't want to hear that. I, I know, I know. I understand. Well, we don't have a choice. I, mean, I know. Right well, I'll tell you what. You wish there were bigger numbers here that you could be cutting. I mean, these having a. I mean, the, the human resources, ninety three hundred dollars. What does she tell us? She's president of an association. They're paying for her to go there. She just has to pay for her travel or whatever, and she's president. Isn't that great? Madison's got someone that's president of an organization like this. And we're no, going to no, debate no, the 90s. No, 90s this is, uh, sorry, Noreen, this is to add an additional person in the department to also go on the trip. That's my understanding. Oh, the 9300 isn't the, the, the no. trip. The trip. Oh, okay. I thought no, this, is a new, this was a, new, a conference in New Orleans. And, um, and I think she was advocating that she's going because she's the. Um, and maybe right, right, should. right. That, that's what I was saying. That was the but, president of the association. Right. But, but the, the request is so the new HR director could also go. And so, and do we ever pay for things like that for any other department? Uh, this was the first time um, that I was aware of, um, uh, you know, travel out of state uh, for a conference. But you know, for for it for all yeah, the different. I've been here during COVID, so I'm not a good uh, gauge good of point, opportunities. Point, yeah. um, I think I think I think Youth and Family Services um, had done that, but I thought it was grant funding. So that was grant. It yeah. was grant money. So, so this would be setting a precedent. So, so, department head. So, you know, budgeting for department head for travel, I guess, is, is standard practice. Okay. We used to have any travel during most of my ten years. <laughs> so, um, you know, so this is actually so two people in the entire department would go. Is that what that is? That, that's my. I think it was the Corolla training for both. So we can double check on that. I think that you know, um, you know, that to me is kind of a, a, a nice to have, but not a, a 
Nice to have that. Okay. Okay, got it. Um, the, um, the Jewish community has been very important. We're, we're going to take a look at, we're going to look at, take a look at health department, right? So that's one we want to take another look at. I think, so part, of, I think part of the health department, I think. Part of, part of it. Yeah, you're right. We're all over. But, so but, but each of is a question mark, right? Um, we're going to revisit each of Leakage of each and rack, the health department building. building. So the question is building, uh, adding extra hours. Are we sure that this is the yes, best place to be? And okay. we said that no matter what, that's what it is. I'm, like okay with the, I'm okay with the building one. I don't need any more information on building. I'm, I'm good on building too. Yeah, I, no, don't, I, need, I don't need I, any more presentations on that. I told And then did I just go back to Beach and Rack? I don't have any problem with the three things you mentioned they want to do with the money at all but i i see what bruce is saying but i have no i'm it's not like i have any objections to anything they want to do with that twenty thousand. so if we can include what we think that we're going to agree with unless the number is not agreeable at the end this way okay. i can run the numbers for you so you can see is that what you're saying yeah that's what we're saying okay that's what we're saying okay so it's not going to be so yes to beach and rack, yes to building, fire marshal. I'm good with it. I'm good. Same. Yep. yep. So health department's a question mark. Uh, health, are we okay with the um, part-time assistant? I am. I think that should continue to be um, ARP money. That, that's a permanent, that's something they've always had. The health department's always had a, a, a need, and needed an administrative assistant. So like I said, we had a retirement um, and we're replacing with uh, half a person and we kind of shuffled around different people across the departments. So we have had a half-time person in there, but it was funded through ARP? Yes. And he wants to continue this moving forward. Right. Just a part-time person. And do we have a sense of the chances of us filling that position? Yes. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, she was in the police department, right? She was in the yeah. police department. And, um, okay. So, and we're going to revisit the next position for help. Yes, the uh, sanitary. HR, we have 6,300 of our staff development that we're going to revisit. Or are you all okay yes. with that? Yes, revisit. Let's revisit that. Okay, and then legal notices we're okay with. Yes. Yeah. We're all okay? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, Madison Road <laughs> and Nomad, they both have an increase. Are we okay with those? I think that's fine. Yeah, I, I do too. I do too. Good. The police, the officers, <laughs> we're going to revisit. Yes. Yeah. And then um, my suggestion on the signs is to take that out of the budget um, and uh, fund that, you know, kind of like we did last year with the emergency signs and things like that, um, the special appropriation. This has been talked I, about even when I was. I, like, I agree, Peggy. I think that's smart. I don't think it belongs here. So we can talk about that separately. Um, the camera system, I don't know if we have a choice on that, right? That's just the $24,000. I think that's the, the system we're having to buy into. So I don't know if there's really any discretion there. We're already installing them at some other pumps, right? That's what our recent special appropriation is different than the cars and the body cams. And there are a lot of state requirements with these cameras now, too. So that might be part yeah. of it, too. I thought this was like the cloud service crops, like vulnerable areas within. Oh, yeah, that's right. You know what? Yeah. We need to talk about that, <laughs> I think. Two cameras. All right. So I'm sorry. I, you're right. This is this is the... I think we have to have a, a, a conversation. I mean, this is putting cameras in our public spaces downtown. Um, I know we've started to do that at some of our town facilities, but I, I, need, I would like to have a bigger conversation about the cameras. Um, I think this is something the public would need to weigh in on before we kind of rolled out this type of program. So I agree. I agree. It's sort of the balance of public safety versus privacy, right? I mean, yeah. it's a big step. It is yeah. a big step. 
for a small town. I, and I, I guess I want to also know just relative to that point. I mean, what are other towns doing? Are we would would we be sort of leading edge? You know, going down the Cadillac path, or are we? You know, do we not need them? Do do other towns not do it? Well, I, 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 or are yeah, we just keeping up? I think we need to talk more about all that and find out and understand it better. Because um, we're also, you know, we're trying to get more, you know, boots on the ground too. So one would hope that that would help mitigate some of the public safety concerns out there by having these advantages and expanded controls. Um, so I would I would question the 24 for that. I'm comfortable with the special appropriation for the 29. And then um, the officers, I'm very supportive of increasing the number of officers. I think we need to talk about what's the right number and maybe what the timing is. Uh, so that'll be a, a revisit. Um, registrars. We good? Yes. Yep. Tax collector. Yes. Yes. I'm good. Yeah. Um, yep. Town clerk. Bruce, I know you had suggested, and we looked into this a little bit about the um, you know, the zero account. Um, I'll let Stacy talk a little bit more about this. Um, you know, just because these are such small increases and you know, this is going to be an ongoing expense, I think, for the town. You know, the absentee ballots is just going to be something we're going to have to deal with, I think, for every election. Um, yeah. I, I, I think the town, the town clerk has totally changed. I mean, granted, when Nancy talks, she talks presidential election, and they're all not that. But her, her department's position has changed so much when it comes to elections. It's just, yeah, I totally agree. We've got to bigger, support, yeah. support bigger, bigger. My take was just for 14,000 in any given year on a $88 million budget, you know, we can absorb those little ebbs and flows on, on that line item. I know, Bruce, you were interested in maybe setting up a reserve fund. I know Nancy is definitely an advocate for it, but me personally, I didn't think setting up a reserve fund for such a small amount was necessarily, you know, what we needed to do. And hindsight's 2020. Should we have built this into the top part of Peggy's um, slide that's up right now? This is kind of contractual. I mean, if we have no say, we have to do this, and this is something that would just happen in the next year. And maybe we shouldn't categorize it as an additional budget request going forward. Those are my thoughts. So I appreciate that. Um, I, I recognize that it's a small amount. I think my intent when I brought it up was there is the day-to-day -day running of the, of the office that Nancy has, and then she's got these unknown variables that um, then kind of cloud the conversation. Are we talking about you know staff demand? Are we talking about other things? And it just I, I thought it was an opportunity by by putting it aside to let Nancy speak more to the, the normal running of her department. But um, I agree with you, um, it is a small amount. And I also agree it really isn't discretionary. It just saves us the annual debate about what's the right funding for the town clerk. Right, so the question is, do we just wanna build it in going forward rather than setting up a whole other reserve fund and funding for, you know. I mean, you know, the, the reality is if they don't end up needing the hours, they're not gonna, they can't spend it any other way, right? So then we have some savings to do. Yeah. So um, and maybe as we kind of work through this expanded concept, we'll have a better handle on what should be budgeted. Um, I think we just put it in the budget, better for safe than sorry, and then Maybe the other thing is, is I was thinking that you would you would um, uh, inaugurate that reserve account with a special appropriation out of the undesignated fund balance and okay. keep it out of the operating line. Well, I was thinking that too, but then uh, Stacy weighed in with her finance hat and thought that the it really, you know, it's not the type of thing we really should be. 
think I, I, yeah. I don't think so. I think that's a normal course of running the town and a normal course of business. And just so you know, I did draft up a regulation based on your recommendation, and we did say the initial funding would come from the special appropriation. Um, so if you all do want to move forward with that, recommend that to board members. That's totally fine. I'm just giving my two cents that this was a normal course of business and business. So why would that happen? So maybe we just think we, uh, uh, we're all in support of the money, and then we put it as a flag. If we're really tight in the end with the budget, we might have to go down to the plan B. So, and then, you know, I know the youth family we already talked about, so that's one that I know, um, you know, a little deeper dive, just getting a better handle on what that is. So, um, so having said that, um, our next meeting is, because we're walking up to the town meeting, our next meeting is the Board of Ed uh, meeting. Um, so I don't think we're going to have a lot of time to do additional, right? It's only an hour? No, I think it's before the Board of Finance meeting. Oh, it is. Okay. So um, we could have, I'm thinking maybe then if we do Board of Ed and maybe police, if it's possible, for that meeting. Because that'll be the longest conversation, I would think. Some of these others, uh, you know, maybe it's just conversations board members have with departments. Um, but the police is one, obviously, because of the size of the request. You know, I would argue we want to have them come, come back to us, at, 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 hopefully, at the same time as the board event. Okay? Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Okay. I'm good. Great. All right. Well, I think with that, then um, we will uh, sign off, and um, we kind of got a, a list. All right. We'll see. You in, we'll see you in five minutes.